and welcome to Emma's ESL English. This is it, the last two episodes ever. Ah. So we're going back to our roots. Today we're looking at grammar and tomorrow we're looking at vocabulary. I hope you find it useful. It might be a little confusing. Just a little. <laughs> Today's grammar word is quite. So small, so innocent. But it's English, so of course it's not quite what it seems. First of all, to be clear, we are talking about quite, spelt Q-U-I-T-E, not quiet, spelled Q-U-I-E-T, meaning shh. The spelling is a really common mistake even among native speakers, so watch out. Quite is a very common word in the English language and we use it in quite a few different ways. And unfortunately, some of them might seem quite contradictory. The first question is whether or not something is gradable. If something is gradable, then quite can mean something like fairly or rather. If it's not gradable, then quite means completely or totally. Let's go back a bit. A little while ago, I said some of the ways we use quite might be contradictory. Contradictory means either inconsistent or opposed to each other. And it's possible for something to be a little contradictory or extremely contradictory or anything in between. So contradictory is gradable. When I said something is quite contradictory, then it means fairly or rather contradictory. So it's going towards the extremely but not there yet. But what about a word like amazing? Is that gradable? Can something be a little amazing or a lot amazing? Not really. Amazing is quite an extreme word, so we can't really make something more or less amazing. It either is or isn't amazing. So if someone says she's quite amazing, then they're reinforcing that extreme word. They're saying she's totally or completely amazing. Hmm, confusing. <laughs> Okay, let's try some more. I'm quite busy. So busy is gradable, right? You can be a little busy or very busy. So this means I'm fairly busy. It's quite impossible for you to come to dinner. Impossible is not gradable. Things are either possible or impossible. So this means that it's absolutely impossible for you to come to dinner. I quite like Chinese food. It's quite common to use quite and like together. Of course, like is extremely gradable. It has so many levels from love right through to hate. So if you quite like something, you rather like it. So it's a little bit closer towards love. We can also use quite with a noun as long as we remember the article. So for gradable adjectives, this might look like, I've had quite a nice day today. Or, I read quite an interesting book last week. Again, meaning fairly or rather. You can use it before the article the to get exactly or completely. You've got everything quite the wrong way round means you got it totally wrong. Or, you're doing quite the opposite to what I told you to do, which means totally the opposite, exactly the opposite. We don't often use quite in comparisons, but when we do, unfortunately, it can be confusing. For example, we might say, the twins have quite similar personalities, don't they? Which means, fairly similar. They are similar. But if I say, my brother and I 
have quite different personalities. It means very or completely different. Hmm. So if quite is used with similar, it means they are the same. And if it's used with different, it means they're totally different. Not quite, the negative, is used quite often and means not completely or not exactly. I haven't got quite enough votes, meaning I was close to winning but didn't. Or she's not quite ready, meaning she's almost ready, close to being ready, but she's not yet. We do sometimes use quite to soften something and make it more polite. He's quite angry, isn't he? Means he's very angry, but it would be rude to say so. I haven't quite finished the project. Means I'm nearly finished, but I know I should have been finished by now and I might get in trouble. <laughs> so let's hear some incorrect uses of quite. It's quite time. So what's going wrong here? Well, it sounds like we're waiting to start something or perhaps go somewhere. This means that the time is finite. It either is the right time or it isn't the right time. In this case, another measure or counting word would be a better fit. For example, it's almost time, it's nearly time. This tells us the time is close. If we wanted to describe how the time was, it would work. I had quite a nice time or how much time it took. It took quite a long time. Or perhaps we're running out of time. There's none left. There's not quite enough time left. All of those are okay. It's quite the perfect thing. In fact, this is a correct use, but we have to check our meaning. If we mean to say it's absolutely perfect, then this sentence is great and a good way to emphasize that perfection. But if we mean it's almost the perfect thing, then this doesn't work. It would have to be negative. It's not quite the perfect thing. Or to make it positive, we'd need a different word. It's almost the perfect thing or it's nearly the perfect thing. Okay, <laughs> I think that's quite enough. I hope you've all found this quite useful. I know I didn't quite succeed in making it that much easier. <laughs> I was getting myself quite confused just trying to understand the differences. But quite is quite a common word. So I think it's quite important to know that it can be used in quite different ways. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye.